so I'm, I'm as um, I just said, so I'm a PhD student currently in my first year. So I'm just getting started. And yeah, in my spare time, I'm a FSFE volunteer. And today I'm going to talk about the subject of, of giving back artificial intelligence in the hand of the people and how do, do, we, uh, do we have intelligent, artificial intelligence that we can control. So this is uh, split in three parts. First is how to create accessible intelligence, artificial intelligence that, that you can use yourself so you do not depend on big players in the AI field. After I will uh, talk about uh, AI transparency and finally about fairness and how to design fair AI that are ethical. So first, on artificial intelligence accessibility. Um, so the issue is that um, you cannot have the resource at home to, um, to, to train the artificial intelligence yourself because you don't have the resource or the time or the knowledge. And because of that, this is a huge issue for AI and because you cannot use it uh, yourself because you don't have the, the resource. So one, one possible solution to make more um, AI uh, um, accessible is to use some method that is called fine tuning. What you do is, so you have a, a model that is doing some, some classification. And, and so here I'm talking about um, deep learning because the f this is the field that masters the most, but it's certainly applied to, to the other part of, of AI. But the idea is that you, you take other models that are trained by big companies and you, you try to train only the part that matters for you. Like you, use, you, you leverage the previous knowledge of other models and you use that to train the, your models. Like, like you only train like this part, like the, the last bits, because the first part of, of the model is long and very uh, resource in intensive to train, but, but the other parts are much faster. So you can use this kind of method to, to uh, use artificial intelligence on just a laptop, just with like training the last layers. And um, also, so there is a, a study um, in uh, 2016 about uh, um, the size of models because the size of deep learning models is um, quite huge. So those models have uh, like millions of parameters. So how to, to read this graph? So here you have the number of uh, floating points operations like the compute, the computing of the, the, the computers. Um, here you have the accuracy and the uh, size of each uh, circle is the number of parameters or you, of your artificial intelligence model. And so you can see that the most accurate models are not necessarily the ones that, are, that have that, like, the, most, uh, the most parameters or the, the more uh, intensive um, computations. That means that uh, you can have like a tiny model that works just as better as uh, the big ones. And because of that, um, the, the, the myth of just throw more power and more computing power to a problem is just not true because you can have like tiny models and they just work the same as uh, the, the big ones. So how to make AI uh, accessible so you can just leverage other models and take their knowledge and use it for, for your particular problem. And you can also uh, release the, the code and the data set as a free license. So other people can also train your model and use, their, use it for, for their purpose. Like they can use uh, your parameters and use that to, to create the, their own model and classifications. And, and also, um, if uh, you can use uh, metrics to, to know how your model is performing, and you can say, um, also, how complex is your model when you release it to the public so people know uh, how uh, compute, uh, computation, what computation is needed for, for using the, the model. So in your design, it's really important to say, consider the number of parameters or the, uh, the time required to train the model. Um, so on the topic of um, transparency, uh, we have to really understand that AI is used for 
really critical matters, like for loan approval or justice or healthcare or self-driving cars. And because of that, we, we must make sure that AI is transparent because then we can trust the model. So it's, this is really like a critical field and uh, we will have to make sure that it's transparent and you can understand how it works and how decisions are taken by um, algorithms. So we want to have uh, AI um, transparency because it's a, it allows you to interpret the result. So you can know not only the result, but also the, the process that led the AI to the, to the solution. Just like stu when, uh, when students are doing the, their, their grading exam, you ask them for the result, but also like how did they found the solution so you can trust their result. So the same goes for, for algorithm. You must have the result and also the process. That's really important for, for you to trust uh, the solution. And this is also helpful for debugging because if you know how the AI uh, forms the solution, then you can debug and know if that makes sense to you. And yeah, so we, we require people to justify themselves. So if uh, there is a justice decision, we, um, there must have some, some way uh, for the people to explain wh what uh, what is the reason behind the, the decision. So we must ask also that algorithm can also uh, be transparent and explain the, 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 the decision. So the issue is that currently uh, the parameters of deep learning models, like there are millions of parameters. So because of that, that's not designed to be transparent because there is so much parameters and you cannot like use like the parameters yourself and uh, interpret them as a human. And that's because AI wasn't designed with transparency in mind, but we can maybe um, create some, some algorithms that are transparent right for, from the start. In their design, they must be transparent. Instead of like trying to, to find work around transparency, design something that's really designed to be transparent. So here I present a framework for AI transparency. So it's called LIM for Local Interpretable uh, Model Agnostic Explanations. So this is currently uh, working. This is, uh, this is implemented in standard artificial intelligence libraries. It allows you to know what led an AI to, to do a prediction. So here, this is a, a data set about uh, like building this discussion. And the AI try to predict if uh, this is an atheist, atheist discussion or not. And you see on the uh, left side, the algorithm considers that it, this is atheist because it speaks about like God or like courage. So, so like you know that the AI just identify what led uh, the decision to be atheist because well, this is word that that is really le relevant to the subject. And on the other side, for the second algorithm, then the AI picked up words that are like not interesting, like an NTP posting host or whatever. And so like you can understand that the AI is not performing well because it thinks that it's at least because for, for the wrong reason. So it allows you to debug the model and also to, to have trust in your, in your predictions. And so this is those kind of things that can make transparent AI. The same goes for image. Here we have a classification of a dog and the AI was able to, to tell what part of the image triggered the decision. So how it works, it's kind of simple. We, for example, for image, we um, cut the image into pieces and after we create an approximation of the model uh, by analyzing how the model is reacting to the uh, input of part of the image and we say what part of the image is contributing the most to the prediction and with this we can say okay this is this part that is more contributing to the decision that this is a tree frog so that way we we can have transparent decision of AI and this also work for um, tabular data here this is a data set about uh, um, predicting if the income is len less than 50k or more than 50k and and you know what um, variable contributed to um, to the prediction so that works for image for text and also for tabular data so this is really like 
something that's, that is uh, model agnostic. So you can use it regardless of your uh, intention and, and problem. And I also want to discuss about this subject of, of fairness because, because there is a lot of misconception about fairness in AI. Let's say you have a protected attribute. Let's say you don't want your AI to, uh, to be unfair about, like, say, gender or religion or skin color or other sensitive attribute of, of someone. So some people can say, OK, I can just remove the variable and say I will not include, say, the, the gender in the input data and just call it a day and say, OK, I'm done with fairness. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Because here, for example, you try to predict, say, the, the speed of a car. You can remove the car color, and that won't impact the prediction because, well, OK, you know that red cars are faster. Like This is obvious, but, but I mean, I mean, you can always remove the color and you know that won't have any impact on the on the prediction, right? But here, let's say you have a real world data set and you want to predict the salary of someone and so you have the gender and you want, you want to remove the gender. But the issue is that in real world data set you have uh, correlations and you see that in the hobby, like you can guess the, the gender of someone because of the hobby, because, well, you know that someone is doing like artistic swimming or something, so the AI will, sp will pick up those correlation and use it as a proxy for, for gender. So that is an issue, because then, if you want to remove every uh, part of like gender, then you will have to remove basically half of the, your data set, and so you won't be able to make accurate predictions. So there is a value, like a trade-off between accuracy and, and the, the value in your data set and, and fairness. So an AI can be unfair because of a lot of various reasons, and this is really the concerning part here. Uh, so the bias can be in the data itself, like we just saw in the previous example, but the AI can also have the wrong metric, as we can, we will see just, just after. And we can have also just bad models that are doing bad predictions, and because of that, be unfair. And also, the, the bias is really hard to, to notice. I mean, you, you are only looking at the accuracy of your model, but not about bias. So you detect this only if you are looking at it, but uh, this is not that obvious. And this is why, as a data scientist, we must make sure that this is our responsibility to check for those those uh, issues about fairness, transparency, making things access accessible. This is really important for us to consider those decisions when making algorithms and do not also just consider the, the accuracy. So just some vocabulary just to, to explain. So, so let's consider just like true positive. This is when your AI, like you have a binary classification, yes or no, and your AI guessed right. Like you, it, predicted, it predicted yes and the true value was yes. After you have the true negative, false positive, this is when uh, the AI thought the decision was yes, but in fact that was the wrong decision, and the reverse. And so you have the positive predicted values, which is the total number of positive predicted uh, class for an algorithm, and the same for the negative predicted values. So here I want to, to present uh, an example, so this is a real example, so this is not science, fi science fiction. Uh, this is a compass, so an algorithm for the uh, justice in the US. So uh, the algorithm detects recidi uh, how likely you are going to recidive after you have committed a crime. And the, some, um, some journalists found out that the algorithm was racist because here the number of uh, false, pos false positive was much higher for black people than for white people. And the same goes for false negative. It was much less for black uh, people. So like it's, it's a real issue, I mean, so I will just accelerate a bit. So um, next, this is another example uh, about, uh, again, uh, um, black and white people in the US for prediction. So this is used in the Boston hospital and here, 
uh, you can see that the AI just used the wrong metrics for prediction because they started from the assumption that uh, the um, amount you paid for your health care is a proxy for how likely you, you need uh, future care. So people that paid more for health care uh, were more likely to have privileged care in the US. And because of that, white, white people were more uh, have uh, better care solutions than black people. So please don't be afraid by, by math. Um, so this is a loss function, and we can we can create some some mathematical formula for fairness in AI. So what we do is we consider k to be a number of positive uh, of a possible values of an attribute like gender or, or like like religion or whatever, and we consider a function that say how fair is the decision for for a value of an attribute. And after we say how well the algorithm predicted, uh, how good was the prediction, and we also add a mathematical, mathematical function that say how fair was the decision. And we try to both like uh, optimize for accuracy and also optimize for fairness at the same time, so that the algorithm is both trained for, for those two, and we have also accurate models and also fair models at the same time during the training. So yeah, that's it. Please ask questions. <laughs>